Welcome to today's reflection from Christchurch. We had a great week at Destinate last week. For those who don't know, it, it is a, a one week long Christian event organized by the churches together in Chorley Wood. Anyway, last week we had 300 plus children, many of them unchurched, and as Tom Apple likes to put it, in the category of not yet Christians. And the message through the week was all about finding out about Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, the teacher, the friend, the healer, and the last day, the Savior. Preparing and then leading the teaching program for the small groups was both exhausting and very rewarding, not least because some of the questions that the children asked were very hard to prepare for. But we were all reminded throughout the week that none of us could do this in our own strength, but in God's strength, and that he was with us. And as I was thinking about that, a couple of verses came to mind. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. And Zechariah 4, verse 6. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. They're good reminders, because I think that too often we do try to do things to fix things in our own strength. And there's a careful line to walk. God has given each one of us gifts. And like the parable of the talents, we're to use those gifts wisely for his purpose. But we mustn't start putting our trust in the gifts and abilities we've been given because our trust needs to be put in the one who gave them to us. One of the tragedies in Christian ministry is seeing the burnout of fantastic believers who try to cope with an ever-increasing load on their own who don't check in with God what they're supposed to be dealing with, who don't ask for help from him in plenty of time. It's also devastating when we see great leaders start to act as though they're infallible, when the only one who never makes mistakes is God. Which then brought me to thinking about humility. Humility as we consider the gifts that we've been given Humility in leadership. Depending on your translation, Galatians lists, lists humility as one of the fruits of the Spirit. The ESV in Galatians 5 does it slightly differently. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Those last words, let us not become conceited. Let us not provoke one another or envy one another. Let's all just rejoice in the fact that we all serve the same Lord. We all have the same objective, the same mission, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what Detonate is all about. It's what Real Summer is all about. It's what each day of our lives is all about. But doing it in God's strength, not our own, with the words that he will give us. One of the things to remember also is that it's, our role is not to drag people into God's kingdom. Our role is to plant the seed of the gospel into their lives by the way that we live, the words that we speak, the love that we show. In 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 to 11, Paul puts it quite clearly. I planted, he says, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. 
You are God's field, God's building. We are God's fellow workers. What an amazing statement. Words don't take away the responsibility that we have to serve. But they do take away the worry and the stress about our achievement. We don't know how successful Detonate was in planting God's word in the heart of the children there. But we do know that planting that seed was the task that we had been given, given to do to the best of our ability, and given in the sure and certain knowledge that God would take it from there. And that trust in God's power, in God's plan, is true for each one of us every day of our lives. Let's pray. Father God, I do pray for those young people who heard the message of Jesus, our Savior, last week. And I pray for those who will hear your word at real summer. More than that, Lord, I pray for us all that we might share the good news of Jesus Christ with all we meet, with our family, our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues. Help us, Father, to live our lives in a way that points to you. And help us, Lord, to recognize that all that we have, all that we are, comes from you and that to you belongs all glory, honor, and power, now and always. Amen. The hymn I've chosen is quite straightforward. It is, to God be the glory. Have a great day and great rest of the week. Bye.